How can a saved Christian be worse than an infidel? Got a letter to the ministry and a guy was asking this question and he said, I don't understand if, you know, if you're saved, if you're born again, how can you actually be considered worse than an infidel, than an unbeliever in God's sight? Well, let's look at the scriptures on that. First Timothy chapter five. I'll show you what the scriptures have to say. First Timothy chapter five. My dog barking in the background, if you can hear that. He's engaged in, in some kind of warfare with a squirrel, probably, or something. <laughs> First Timothy chapter 5, verse 1. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters, with all purity. Honor widows that are widows indeed. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them first... Uh, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite their parents, for this is, that is good and acceptable before God. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate trusteth in God and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. Okay, now here's the verse. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for they of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Let not a widow be taken into the number under three score years old, having been the wife of one man, well reported of for good works. If she have brought up children, if she have lodged strangers, if she have washed the saints' feet, if she have relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work. Okay, so you see it there, that if you don't provide for your own, your own house, especially they have, of your own house, that you've denied the faith and you're worse than an infidel. All right. Um, you have to understand what Christianity is all about, what it means to be a Christian. And if you say, I'm a Christian, but then you yourself are acting like a hypocrite, you're doing things that don't line up with biblical teachings, then you're denying the faith that you're professing. And that makes you worse than an infidel. It doesn't mean that you are lost or that you've lost your salvation. It just means you're falling into some serious sin here, and God's going to do something to correct that. All right. Um, you know, we're supposed to be um, examples and things out there. And so, you know, you start to, you know, you have some kind of a widow or whatever else, your mother or, or something, or mother-in-law, and she meets the qualifications of verse 10. Well, uh, verse 9 through 10, I should say it that way. And you don't take care of her. Well, then you've denied the faith and you're worse than an infidel. All right. So, um, and of course, you can make, other applications to 1 Timothy 5, 8 there, if any provide not for his own, especially for they of his own house, well, in context, it's talking about the care of widows. But that would also mean the care of a wife. If you're not providing for your wife, if you're not providing for your children, then again, you're not really being a good husband and father. Um, that's a problem. You're supposed to provide for your own. Okay, let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter six. Um, Second Corinthians six, verse fourteen through eighteen. We'll see the other reference to infidel here. Second uh, Corinthians chapter six, verse fourteen. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols, for ye are the temple of the living God? As God hath said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. All right. Um, there's supposed to be separation. Again, biblical separation is not something that's taught in the modern churches because they want to church the unchurched. How can you do that and maintain standards of separation? You're bringing lost people in, playing music that they like, playing movies that they like, Hollywood movies that they like, little segments and things for it to make your sermons, you know, life application or whatever else. These modern churches are satanic. Don't go near these modern churches. If you're a modern Christian, go into these modern churches and they got the 
the electric guitars and the drums and all the other stuff, run, run away from those places. All right, the temple of God is supposed to be separate from that stuff. You are not supposed to say, I want anything to do with an infidel. And I'll tell you right now, you get somebody who's a lazy, a man that's a lazy welfare type of guy or whatever else. I understand some guy gets injured or something and he can't, you know, he's crippled in a wheelchair. Well, not much he can do about that. I get that. But I'm saying you get some guy that could work and he doesn't want to work. He's not providing for his own. He isn't. Some guy that makes a lot of money and he says, you know, his mother gets older and he says, I don't, can't take care of mom anymore. Put her in a home someplace. Uh, you're denying the faith and you're worse than an infidel. And we're not supposed to even have, um, what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Infidel. We're not even supposed to have a part with them. Not even supposed to fellowship with them. All right. And again, this is the thing. It's so amazing to me because modern churches will take 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 18, and they will apply it to marriage. Well, it's instruction and in righteousness for marriage. Yeah, you shouldn't be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. I agree with that. But in, in context, it is talking about worship together. It's talking about church, you know, fellowshipping and things inside of the church. You're not supposed to have saved and lost people worshiping together. How does that work out with the modern church building? Hey, how many people brought a visitor tonight? What are they doing in the church of God? They're not supposed to be there. It used to always irritate me. I knew go to, going to church buildings growing up and everything else, and, and even as a young man when I first got saved, and I'd see these people. Their parents are lost. They're not saved, and they bring them into the church, and, okay, everybody, stand up. We're going to sing hymn number, you know, such and such. Um, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And these lost people are singing this because they're told to sing it. And they don't want to feel out of place. So they're there with their suit and tie on because I wanted to come and visit my son's church that he goes to. And they're lost and they're singing songs that saints are supposed to sing. And you do that long enough, you start to think to yourself, you know, maybe I am a Christian. What a horrible satanic trap. You see, you read the entire New Testament, there's no place in here where God said, okay, to the Christians gathered in Antioch, to the Christians gathered in Jerusalem, to the Christians scattered throughout Asia, and Pontus, and Galatia, and Cappadocia, and all the other, build church buildings and invite the lost to them evangelize the lost with your church building. Make sure that the collar scheme is good and the, the, the carpet of the, co the collar of the carpet. And it should match the pews, you know, that you, the padding on the pews. And, and make sure that, the, you know, you have some nice crystal chandeliers in there because that really gets, you know, people wanting to, to give tithe money to the church to help you pay for it. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. You see, you have to look at the scriptures for what they are. It isn't just something, well, it was written in the first century and it applied to them, but a lot of this stuff doesn't apply to us anymore. Um, no, God didn't say, hey, you know what, first century Christians, I'm not going to give you any kind of command to build a church. But after that, after the Bible's done, the New Testament's finished, I'll build all the churches you want. No, you have to look at the, interpret the scriptures through how it was written and say, I'm not going to add anything to this. Just that simple. So, well, you know, I, I, you know, the infidel thing there, it's talking about a lost person. And, and you know, uh, Christians, you know, you can't be lost and everything else. And, and uh, once you're truly saved, you can't be lost, which I believe and teach. Um, so, you know, then this could mean this way and that means... No, what it means is if you're not providing for your own, then you are denying the faith that you profess. It doesn't mean that God's denying you. It means that you aren't acting like a Christian. And there's an awful lot of disciplinary stuff that happens in the New Testament that is not practiced by the modern churches because they don't want to lose tithes and whatever else. And you get somebody that has a good following and the little, the little cliques that are in the church buildings. And old brother so-and-so here, yeah, he's kind of messing around. He's, you know, living in some pretty bad sin here. But uh, I don't want to say anything because we'd lose his tithe and then all of his, the families that know brother so-and-so and, -so and uh, you know, uh. We're running a corporation here. You know, it's all about numbers. That's what they do. I'm not insulting or, oh, you're saying it because you were hurt in your past or something. <laughs> People get so desperate lying about me. Um, 
No, it's what the Bible teaches. It's truth. It's reality. So uh, how can a Christian be called an infidel? Um, well, very simple. By uh, the standards of Scripture. The Scriptures say if you're not providing for your own, you've denied the faith and you're worse than an infidel. Um, are you saved? Well, uh, according to your confession, uh, or profession of faith and the confession that you're following the scriptures and you've said the right things and whatever. So according to your statements, I can judge and say, yeah, I believe that you're saved because you're, what you're saying lines up with the scriptures. Uh, but ultimately it's between you and God. Um, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I could be working, but I'm not, I'm, you know, milking the system or doing whatever else and things, other evil things. And, and, uh, but you know, I, I mean, well, brother and, and whatever. Well, you know, if you're in a wheelchair or something, I, I get it. You can't physically, that's fine. But I'm talking about an able-bodied man that could be working, could be doing something. And he's not. Um, I don't want to be in your position. Okay. I work very hard, uh, for the living that I make very hard. And if the time ever comes that I get kicked off of YouTube and I get kicked off the internet and whatever else, uh, and I can't continue in ministry, I'm going to have to do something else. That's why I have multiple skills. Um, I can do small engine repair type of stuff. I was certified motorcycle mechanic. <laughs> I went through the mo motorcycle repair technician, excuse me, went through the training for that many years ago, shortly after high school. Um, I can do logging. I can saw and split firewood and sell firewood. I used to do that. I can be in wood turning. I can do rustic furniture making. I can do, there's a lot of skills and a real man will have lots of skills to fall back on. And I can do that stuff right now. I'm on YouTube, irritating a lot of the people out there. <laughs> uh, I do a good job at that. Hey, you have to say that one thing about me that Brian Denlier does a really good job at irritating his en enemies. I do a good job at that. So, you know, <laughs> that's a whole other issue, but um, take the scriptures seriously. And when the scriptures say that if you do such and such, then you've denied the faith and you're worse than an infidel, I'd stay away from that. I'd stay far away from that. All right. I'd look at that and I, I fear God. And I look and I say, I don't want him saying that about me. I don't want, uh, my wife and my son to say, yeah, he didn't provide. We were just poor all the time. And, you know, it was just a terrible life and whatever else. Um, I work hard to provide for them. And I always will, as long as God gives me life and whatever. So if that verse applies to you, 1 Timothy 5, 8, if it applies to you, um, repent. Get out of that, do something. Okay. And if you're going to one of these modern church buildings where lost and saved are both welcomed, um, saved people... Uh, will always compromise and go over towards the lost people's standards. Never the other way, unless just temporarily. You might get somebody that's lost and come along. And yeah, I've seen this thing so many times in my life. Um, meet somebody new and whatever, a neighbor or somebody in the area. And, and oh, what do you do for a living? I say, I'm a preacher. And it, oh, you know, and that's, a, you know, the real clean language for a while. And then, you know, a word might slip, you know, after they around me for a little while and then oh i'm sorry about that and you know and, and then and then more time goes by and there more words are slipping and whatever else and they're trying to pull me into the same thing of saying hey if you're going to be around me i'm going to be swearing and i don't want you judging me for that and so that's why i'm not around these wicked sinners i'll help out neighbors and do whatever else i can but i don't want to be around the ones that are lost all the time no thank you no because all that they're going to do is just try to get me to compromise my beliefs. And I'm not compromising my beliefs. It's just that simple. So uh, that'll be it for this little short study. And I um, have a couple more to do. And I'm going to do one more and then move the camera. Hopefully I can get away from some of these mosquitoes and the sand gnats. Uh, they're a little bit miserable right now. But uh, and hopefully I can get my dog to be quiet out there. Sorry about that. But uh, I guess that'll be it. Thank you very much for watching.